Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thanks so much for joining us on this Groundhog Day. Good to have you with us. Lots to talk about. Let's meet the panelists, starting with Wendy Weiss from the Big 550 KTRS, Bill McClellan from STLToday.com, Ray Hartman from Raw Story and the Riverfront Times, and Alvin Reed from the St. Louis American. Elvin, thanks for taking time away from your family on this Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you open your gifts the night before or the day of? Yeah. I did. I do. I do. Well, I should see if he saw his uh, shadow or not. He did see his shadow, so Phil said we get six more weeks of uh, winter, whatever that means. Bill is a rodent. Bill is a rodent. So, <laughs> he's not a meteorologist, but whatever works, right? Alvin Reed, there was a showdown in Jefferson City when representatives from the circuit attorney's office, Chris Hinckley and Reddit Hudson, squared off against lawmakers. The lawmakers, mostly Republicans, I think, want in the, wanted in this hearing to take over certain functions of the circuit attorney's office, uh, including prosecuting violent crime. Hudson and Hinckley said, no, uh, we're doing just fine. Thank you very much. Do you think the circuit attorney, Kim Gardner herself, should have showed up at this uh, meeting in Jefferson City? Well, if I was her, I would have gone. And I think um, the two representatives, I would have used their time leading into that. I said, like, whoever is going to be questioning me, I want to find out every crime committed in whatever little town they're from. I want every statistic on why what's going on here is going on across America, even cities that have, uh, you know, Republican prosecutors. I would have been armed with facts, and I also would have been armed with, I'm going to stare you down, I'm going to face you down. And, yeah, I, it just would have been, not loud, but I would have been aggressive in addressing that. And then I probably would have also, like, shown my shoulder. Too, like <laughs> while I, I was take, uh, take her jacket yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would yeah. not, I, I I don't think I think it would have been a mistake for her to go. I think that it's it was first of all everybody's interpretation of what happened is pre preordained based on their how they get their news, which cycle. So and and you can't control that you can't control the environment when you get down there and so the people that want to make a take a shot at her expense to me and at least in the right wing cycle they're going to win from their perspective and and vice versa on the other side i will say this reddit hudson i didn't get to see what happened reddit hudson's about as good a public speaker as i've ever seen and so he would be a great i, I didn't see what happened but reddit can just bring it as a, he's a very big guy and he's just he actually was associated with us at the aclu mm -hmm. back in the day reddit is just fabulous so i would think if i had reddit if I was her, I'd stay away from it myself, and I'd send him. I, I agree with you, Alvin. I think that I think that her unwillingness, or her that perceived unwillingness to engage, makes it almost look like it's it's justified. The brick bats are justified. She won't even she won't even come to defend herself. And I understand to a degree her perhaps wanting to send the message, I don't have to, I don't need to defend myself. I think she would have looked like a grown-up. She could have easily turned the tables on them. Uh, we've all seen her speak, and she can be incredibly impressive. So I think she missed a golden opportunity. I agree. Well, I, I disagree with Alvin and Wendy. I, I think it was just a circus atmosphere, and nobody was really going to try to like discuss this and make a point and everybody on the right side would have tried to be Rush Limbaugh and get the best line in and and I, th I think that something like this is just well I think she's more than capable of, of or, or being, that's fine. being Hillary Clinton yeah like I said if you guys want to make this about you know your political base and all that that's fine but I'm gonna greet you with the realities of the situation and then also hey look they want to that you know the majority of them down there don't want to teach yeah, but, black but, history but, but, no, in schools hey, and well, uh, things like that. So, your, Ray, your argument is, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. So, 
educators should go down there when given the chance to testify well, to defend what they're what oh, they, sure, they, they she, she doesn't have Gardner. a great record to defend no, I, wait, I mean I, she's got a backlog of 4,000 cases she's been penalized and fined well, by the Supreme Court would, when she got 3,500 tickets from the and, State and, Highway and, Patrol well, she ripped them up and, and, I could, and, and, and bring it on bring it on this is my opportunity to tell you exactly what's going on right and tell them if you want to help me then you send me some more money, or you send me some more resources, or you but, do but this, no, no, or no. you do that. But, but that doesn't excuse her when she gave murder cases to a woman who's on maternity leave. I mean, she's dropped the ball a number of times. Right, right. She doesn't have a good record to defend. Oh, she doesn't. Don't. It doesn't even matter. Don't go wait a down. minute. Wait, 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 Alan, it doesn't even matter whether she had a good record to defend. The sound bites would have been what you just said, and I agree with you about teachers and okay. people like that going down. I'm talking about as a lightning rod she's an personality. Attorney. Wait, she she's an attorney. Yeah, she's and attorneys an represent people who are sitting there guilty as all yeah, get out. Yeah, and I they did. put on a case that that person I might did. just walk around. Hey, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you someone she's a politician. There was no there. upside to her going down there, in my opinion. I, I there's, there's a woman. There's a woman who she uh, was represented. I'm not saying she should. Don't don't run for fights. That's what I. Uh, I recommend right. she hire this Washu grad who has a piece in today's business journal. It's an op-ed piece uh, on what she did when she was a prosecutor in Boston. She now lives in St. Louis. I, I don't know what she's doing. Her name is, I believe, Trisha McDonald, and she points out both sides that you know you have to work together, but also that this circuit attorney is really hampered in the St. Louis area because there are no gun laws. And so there's no reasonable suspicion that a police officer can use to pull somebody over. So you can only react as a police officer after the crime is committed. It's actually a great reading, but... Yeah. So we're not giving you homework assignments, but it's great reading. <laughs> okay, Wendy Weiss, I want to ask you about uh, salaries and the St. Louis Board of Aldermen voting themselves a pay increase almost doubling it, going from 37000 to $72,000. When you compare it to the amount of money that a utility infielder play gets for the St. Louis Cardinals, it's not that much money. Do you begrudge them that seventy-two? No, but when you compare it to what the police officers are making or what the regular, you know, your garden variety rank and file city employee is making and how excited they're supposed to be when they get a two to three to two to three percent increase they're supposed to <laughs> woo, this i just think the optics on this are terrible absolutely terrible and it's 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 a done deal i go ahead man oh, oh I, well i was just gonna say i think you're right about the optics i i think the amount itself is not on i mean somewhere between a, a utility and field or is at a normal person the, the average job in the city probably uh, where it falls but I think if you looked at what other city council type folks around the country make I would guess it's 71 is it whatever they're gonna make 72 72, 72. Uh, is not excessive but I think it sends a bad message that as soon as the number of aldermen are cut in half we're going to double it. And even if you're going to double it, I'd say phase it in over mm -hmm. a few years. Phase it in. And, and well, that's all I have to say. But well, I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's just 38%. It's, it's, it's 39.5%. It sends it's a like bad message. Keepers are 100%. That's just... I, I hear you, but I just kind of think that... Okay, case in point. When I went from Danville to Lansing, the paper was a little more than twice the size. And I almost doubled my salary. Now, then it was a guild paper as opposed to not. But that being said, I just think that they are deserving of this money and while I understand the phase in if they're going to get the money pay them the money I I, 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 I don't begrudge them that but uh, we visited with an unsold criminologist because I'm old I'm mm. having trouble remembering his name Professor Rosenthal this morning on the show and he was talking about how important pay is to police officers in large metropolitan areas and what it, you know what is it going to take to to have the best and the brightest police officers and he said money and so when you have the police officers association tweeting their ire over this, I just, it's yep. bad. It's Th just That's bad. a good point, because after 20 years, a police officer in the city makes 66, which would still well, be lower and than having, the member of the Board of Aldermen. But nonetheless, they now. all, they should all have pay increases. Agreed. In my view. Uh, but maybe they should fill the potholes first and then ask for money. Well, I, I know a young cop who just went from the city to uh, Edwardsville and got like a $25,000, $30,000 raise. Yes. And, you know, the police are aware of this. And when you 
uh, give the aldermen the huge jump up they have in the midst of negotiations. Exactly. I mean, it's just really tough to, I think, to tell the police, just settle down, fellas right. and, and women, and give yourself that kind of money. But bad, bad look. What did you think about Washington University, Bill, buying six properties in the loop, that storied street that goes through St. Louis and University City from Joe Edwards, the unofficial mayor of the Loop. Now, he didn't sell the pageant, Delmar Hall, Pinnacle, Blueberry Hill. Blueberry Hill, right, exactly. Right. Well, I thought, I thought it was a good thing. I mean, when, the one thing about Washington University is they have a bunch of money, and so they're, not, and they, they're concerned about the Loop, and they're concerned about that area, and they're not going to let it go down. I mean, you can look at some areas, like uh, uh, drive down Euclid right now, and you think, geez, you, it's just not doing as well as it used to. I mean, there's an arcade games place where uh, Balabans used to be, Duff's is closed, and uh, I think... You know, these neighborhoods and streets can shift in a hurry, and I think Wash U is going to make sure that that doesn't happen in the loop. So I thought it was a good thing. I think Wash U wants it to be Kirkwood, and it's not Kirkwood. It's, it's downtown St. Louis. Not downtown. But I fear the, the goal is to sanitize, not to improve. And I just... That bothers me. This, there's just, there's, uh, I don't know. You don't think sanitizing is an improvement? Well, I think that... Um, I don't mean I gentrification. Think what, I, 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 mean, I mean, I just kind of mean what Wash U considers fun and what young people and most St. Louisans consider fun are two different things. And I'll just, I just don't know where it's, but, I just. You know, I, sometimes we have to take the Forest Park Parkway to 9 PBS if, if traffic isn't cooperative <laughs> on Highway 40. But I, whenever I go through the Washington University campus, I think of how, how beautiful it is and how, you know, they, it, it, everybody appears they have the elevated walkways and that kind of thing, and everything seems to be very safe. I have no, I'm, I'm with Bill, I have, I have no problem at all with them expanding, because I think that that, that bolsters up the, the entire area and everybody who lives there. I, and, 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 no? Wash you, this isn't like their first rodeo in uh -uh. U City. They're watching you. I think owns a ton of stuff in University City and the Loop now. And I, good, first of all, good for Joe Edwards. I mean, he, his legacy is cemented. Amen. Yeah. What he did, and if he's getting a payday, whatever, great. I don't know. I, I, if the I, University, you, if but, University but, of Missouri started buying properties like right well, next to Shakespeare's and all that, people would say like, "What's that about?" Well, all right. I, I, if, I, I, if, I, if Washington, and, and Washington uh, does is, say is a big property owner now. Paying is my property point. taxes. Right. And these but, there's, there's and that's it because that's a big concern, right? And in universities. that's what one of the concerns. Sanitize, though, what, what no, you, I, here's what Elvin means. I don't want to speak for you, but I, 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 <laughs> well, I, 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 I thought no, it was because Wash you, <laughs> you're right. Wash you doesn't spare any expense when it comes to its property, it's beautiful, but. The kids want something that's a little bit gritty. Yeah. You know, it, it can't, it's got to have tattoo parlors that are a little bit dirty because that'll attract you know, like, people. Okay, so now they own the bowling alley, and the bowling alley closes at 9 o'clock. You know, like, what is that doing for anybody? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know, know that that's going to happen, but no. these are say, the things wait, I'd be concerned about. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, he, he's worried that an institution could take over and give an institutional feel to there what has go. been described Thank as you, one Charlie. of the great streets in America. Thank you, Charlie. You brought, you brought an interpreter. I did. No, right. I, 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 you can, I, I, you can I, represent I, me in Jefferson City. Yeah. I'm, I'm channeling right, Alvin. Right. No, thank you. You okay. said it much better than I did. I want to ask Ray because you, uh, our viewers may not know, but you served on the uh, Tourism C <laughs> Commission for yes. years. Yes. And there's actually a couple of proposals that I think mm -hmm. are right up your alley. One would be uh, a proposal, once again, for the state to subsidize Hollywood. Uh, to provide film tax credits, so some of these movies would be shot in Missouri. Right now, that's dead. And there's another proposal for the state to subsidize international nonstop airline traffic from Kansas City to mm, Europe. Uh, just like Lufthansa has the nonstop mm -hmm. to Frankfurt in St. Louis, now they're talking about the new, newly renovated Kansas City airport to have some sort of nonstop to Europe or Asia, so, subsidized by the taxpayers. What do you say? What do you think Alvin thinks? Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll just go. No, I'll, I'll just, I'll just pass. No, um, let me, well, the two, they're, they're very unrelated, but the first one is the, the late, great 
Kim Tucci, mm -hmm. was a passion of his, was the film, the tax credit, and he was absolutely spot on right. It is one of the ones that, for whatever reason, people don't understand how much uh, benefit there is to the state, any state, for being part, whether you like it or not, is one of those kinds of enterprises that you have to compete with other states on. And getting film tax credits is essential to getting film lo locations. And they're really good for the area in terms of not only revenue, but, but image. The second one, I think, is really an interesting story in that we're, it's a role reversal. For years, for decades, every time St. Louis gets something, Kansas City's like, hey, we want our share. And it's sort of turnabout on that. I mean, we were saying, look, Kansas City's getting this. Well, but we, I mean, we might have had help getting Lufthansa. Right. I don't know why I can't I say that, Lufthansa. Yeah. But why would Kansas City, with everything they have going on in terms of flights and flights, the number of flights being increased, why would they expect help from the state tax well, I think it's fine. I, mean, I just think no we should be asking. No to Kansas City. No. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes to the Yes chiefs. to movies. No when, when, they, when they filmed yeah. uh, three billboards in Missouri <laughs> and North Carolina, I I'm thought, this is a mistake. And but Kansas City, why should... Well, and, and they won't I, get Frankfurt. They'll get Berlin. Or they'll get... I was just going to... I was just going to say... You can't we, argue. I'm not comparing mayors. They have a very sharp mayor. Quinn Luke is sharp. And he, he's not gonna miss a dime. And he said, like, okay, they got it or they got this. Let's let's just try to get it. All they can say is no. So I I, I don't have, blame I don't them. have a problem with Kansas City. I think we should be asking for for stuff. Okay. To have to have That's Ozark, awesome. which was a yeah. record breaking success on Netflix, I believe, filmed in Georgia and written by Mr. Yeah. Dubuque of St. Louis. Do, but but does it really help? Last yes. weekend, for example, Ray, Bengals. Chiefs game, 60 million viewers, right? Yeah. 60 million. Huge television game. Yeah. Is that going to do anything for Kansas City? That's oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like it did for Green Bay? No, no, no. It, right. it, and Detroit? Dude, no. Yeah, apples it's, and oranges. It's a, no, it's it's a, it's a, it's a yes, four hour yes. commercial for hey. that city. That's By right. the way, I our esteemed know. senator made a bet with about uh, the Chiefs, but the restaurant he picked is in Kansas. Yeah, how about that? You know, Holly, so, uh, yeah, it, that it, shows yeah. how, and he's from Western oh, Missouri. Oh, that is so on. petty. That no, is one that's time, kind of Okay, I want to go back in history. One time I had a barbecue sauce out, right? Yeah. And, and the money yes. went to charity. Charlie yeah. Brennan's Zesty Barbecue yeah. Sauce. And John Ashcroft, when he was a senator, he bet somebody else. Uh, some senator from another yeah. state, and he used Charlie Brennan's Zesty Barbecue Sauce, yeah. and this guy had a column <laughs> criticizing that, <laughs> saying it should have been Gates Barbecue <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> and... But I, well, didn't, that was... I, I didn't like you at the time. <laughs> oh, this is... Stop it. Now, now we're friends. We, we, we you know, spin-off topic here. No, it's it. called Irish Alzheimer's. You forget everything but the grudges. Oh, okay. That's Alvin Reed, I want to ask mail. you about uh, Shalanda Webb, now the chair of the St. Louis County Council, who has heard enough. She's got all these people coming in from all parts of the county at the county council meetings talking about reading poetry and talking about orbiting Saturn, everything but county business. So she's put the kibosh on that. She wants to limit discussion. I agree, because there's business to be done. What do you think? Well, I mean, she was willing to sit there and listen to hours of that mess back, you know, two summers ago. And people were, you know, we, it was the aliens brought the, you know, the COVID virus. and all yeah. that. All right. But I have to stand with her on this, because just getting up and speaking at any public meeting and not talking about any subject at hand, it's, it's just a waste of, of time, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of for. I, I think no. most municipalities, individual ones, monitor this kind of thing, so why shouldn't the county be any different? I think I, maybe they should have a time limit on speaking. They do. But, yeah, but, but the idea of they're going to watch what you say, especially that w woman who recites poetry, you know, and e even though it's against liberals and against Democrats, I think that's that's pretty cool, I, and, and I, I think she should be allowed to do it. I think this is fixing something that went broken, to be honest with you. And I, I thought, I said to her, to her face, well, actually, on the radio, rid, rid of her days, I think, is going to look a lot better every day for what she did. I think she had a... And at the time, I thought she was given too much time for the, for the folks on the pandemic. But I have to say, in retrospect, I think Rita looked great. 
uh, in the way she was very patient and very uh, open, Tolerant, yep. very open to, to and, and very consci conscientious about letting people speak on a, as a pure legal matter. If the county allots time, they can certainly limit it three minutes of time. They cannot, in a fir under the First Amendment, a exactly. government cannot regulate the, the content of that speech. Mm -hmm. They're just going to get, they're going to lose that argument. You cannot do it. You can't say, well, you can talk about this, it's local and not that. They're going to lose that argument. And, well, and that's, that's, I, that's just crazy. You just I, can't, you I, can't I, do I that. I think a little bit of the craziness, I think that was... I think that was exactly what the situation required. I hate to say that during the pandemic, but people were already feeling a little fritzy, and and if it if it helped them yeah, to go oh, and come read, on. no, we no, 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 handle that. No, well. no, I think, these, I think these she, officials, yeah. they're they're, they're part time now, lawmakers. They're they, busy. They have families. No, they, they can't be sitting for three hours through it, people's. They, it wasn't three. It was two at one point. Yeah. But they, Rita said, if we have it, they, they got back to where they need to be, which is if they allocate an hour, which is what their rules mm. call for. They say that if you're going to do an hour, no more than three minutes, that she was absolutely right. And it, it took some guts because oh, a brother. lot of people on the left didn't want to hear it. Yeah. And okay. Rita but liked let's it. Move on. All right. Because. Alvin, I know that you're very concerned about uh, motorists on Highway 55 who for, well, since the late 60s, I think, have been seeing those Clydesdales, uh, the beautiful mural of the Clydesdales on, painting on the side of the brewery. Well, it's coming down and a new one would with fresh paint is going up, but it's a different design. How do you feel about this? I think Anheuser-Busch is trying to sanitize the side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, this concerns me, okay? Because some things are just happy enough and sacred enough sacred. to leave those horses alone. I mean, you know, those horses are committing crimes. Those horses <laughs> don't care what we teach in school. Those, those horses just are up there and they're beautiful and they represent us so well. A mural? Oh no, that takes away. That's that, this is leading to something else. I hey, fear, but I hardly ever stand for progress. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like replacing yeah. old people with young, energetic, articulate, productive people. people. But on this one, I stand with the brewery. That mural, it's still going to be Clydesdales. It's just going to be brighter and newer and faker. And, well, I don't know about faker. I don't know. You know what? Fakier. The entire Fakier. world. Fakier. Either, way. Either way. I'm with Brother Alvin. The entire world, Brother Bill, I'm sorry. But the entire world has been turned upside down. And I draw a great deal of comfort and peace when you pass those Clydesdales. Mm. Clip, clop, clip, clop. You can almost see them going around the warning track at the stadium. It's like... I, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Right. Fresh them, with freshen them not, up. You're not with Brother Bill. I'm not with Brother Bill. No, well, brother you got to understand, Brother Bill. I, I reject we Brother Bill. Bill. We we I stand need, with Brother Alvin. We like need a Sistine Chapel. We need well, a Sistine Well, but it is to us. But, but brother, it, 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 when but in it's Rome. Still, they're still going to be Clydesdale. But they're not going to be the big sign. They're not going to be the tired Clydesdale that we feel we need to have a companionship with. We need a disclaimer here. Brother Bill is something called a Cubs fan. You cannot trust Brother Bill on the subject. And I don't, I'm not casting any asparagus here. What? I think and I've just said enough. Clothing. This is, you know, yep. these are not just any old ponies okay. to us, yeah. Bill. Well, well these right. are okay, right. okay. Bill, I'm going to ask you, done. Brother Bill. Um, <laughs> It's been announced that some of the operators of marijuana dispensaries, and this month marijuana will be sold recreationally in the uh, state of Missouri, are actually some pretty well-off guys who may not need the money, I'm thinking. Uh, Barrett Jackman, former St. Louis Blue, Brett Hall, Kelly Chase, Larry Hughes from the NBA. Wouldn't it be nice to give it to the... Uh, little guy instead of the guys who have already done pretty well in life? Well, I, I think so, but e even more than that, the fact that, you know, after the governor hijacked the medical marijuana bill and uh, let Steve Tilly take over, and originally it was going to be Missouri people, and I don't care if it's rich Missouri people so much, but, you know, like the, the, the Larry Hughes is, he's working for a guy from Los Angeles. This, this is a big national company, and that's not what this was supposed to be. This was supposed to be helping Missouri yes, people. Yes, I agree. And, well, and I don't like it. Okay, well, all right. Sooner or later, Missouri's going to pass, you know, legalized gambling. And 
I would like to be involved in that, okay? But I don't have any money. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm all yeah, for right. you, yeah. I hope, that's, that's, I'm a little guy. A Somebody just give me one. Right. I, yeah. You know, it's, you got to have money to get involved yeah. no matter who is in charge of and, it. And Larry Hughes is a St. Louis guy. Well, I, and, and Larry Hughes is a fine No, but guy he's a legend, but he's also a St. Louis. I mean, I don't think that the intention would be, first of all, you do have to have a certain downstroke to do this yes I mean, you can't and and it's professional athletes you know are probably people who are able to, to right. do that and i i, and I, I th think it's uh, and it may are you saying that because they're partnering with other people i think I, you're letting i, 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 think I don't to, to borrow one of your favorite phrases i think you're letting the perfect be the enemy of the good well i'm all for legalized pot yeah <laughs> but i just wish it were all the money were going to missourians I think it makes sense, Bill. Brother Bill, as you're known now. <laughs> ah. Hey, let's go to the letters and see what people had to say about last week's program. I wanted to express my appreciation for the Donnybrook Next Up segment from January 26th with former St. Louis television journalists Don Johnson, Betsy Bruce, and Don Marsh. I appreciated their perspective as a viewer that laments the decline of both local broadcast journalism and the prosperity of the St. Louis region as a whole. That from Eric Brighton of Denver, formerly of South St. Louis. The Get Off My Lawn World Tour was just great fun. Can you even imagine the library of broadcast history that was in that room? That from Judd Hirschfeld, Boilermakers Local 27, retired. I was dismayed and discouraged that none of the three broadcast journalism icons on tonight's show, when asked about the current preference for following the news, mentioned the PBS NewsHour. The NewsHour does none of the things they decried about modern TV news. That from Dan Landis of St. Louis. Thank you, Charlie, for speaking up that one should pay for the St. Louis city tax only when one works in the city. Your points were spot on. Bill's comment that those who live around the city should take an interest in paying whether they have to or not was laughable. Alvin's response was at least insightful. That from the brilliant Greg R. You can write us care of 9PBS. Don't forget the zip code 63108. We love those emails. Donnybrook at 9PBS.org. And those tweets use hashtag DonnybrookSTL. Call the 9 line 314-512-9094. And listen to us on your favorite podcast source. Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and TuneIn. Thank you very much for joining us for the first half, but don't go away. In a moment, we'll talk about Christopher Dunn, who was convicted about 30 years ago. He's still in prison, but the witnesses recanted their testimony. A judge says he's innocent, so why is he still in prison? We'll talk about that next on Next Up. Donnie Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.